Well, an exciting few days here coming up at NASA. A probe is going to be heading out to touch the sun. Now, that sounds absolutely crazy to me. We have a doctor, Dr. Nordwafi from NASA here to talk about this. So when you say a probe is going to be touching the sun, sir, what exactly do we mean here? So for the first time in history, um, we have a spacecraft that is flying closest to the sun ever. This has never been done before. And this we have been dreaming of since 1958. It's over 60 years ago. But we did not have the technology to fly a spacecraft so close to a star because the environment there is so harsh. And if you don't have the right technology, the spacecraft will just not work there. So it took us 60 years, but there we are now. We are just a few days from making history. Let me make a parallel with since I'm talking about history th the, here. In 1969, I was not born there, but we landed humans in, in the moon, on the moon for the first time. In, in Christmas Eve 2024, we are going to embrace a star. That cannot be any more exciting than that. That is amazing. And I have a question, though, um, because we all know the sun's very far away. But this probe launched back in 2018, and now we're just starting to get close to the sun. Can you explain about, like, why it's been taking so long to get this close? It's it's really, it, it might sound counterintuitive. The sun is the largest object in the whole solar system. By itself, it weighs more than 99.8% of the total mass of the solar system. But getting so close to the sun is extremely hard because whenever you launch an object from Earth, we inherit the orbital speed of Earth. So in order to get closer to it, we need to slow the spacecraft a tiny bit. And to do that for Parker Solar Probe, we have been using Venus multiple times and every time we fly by Venus, the spacecraft will slow a tiny bit and then it dives closer to the sun. So we flew by Venus seven times. The last one was on November 6th this year. That's actually what sets up, uh, set us up for the closest approach on December 24, 2024. And, and I think this goes back to the, the general saying, uh, you're smarter than a rocket scientist. Or like That just sounds like so much math there. And oh, my goodness. Uh, my next question, uh, I guess, is, you know, the sun's always been a constant in our sky. It, it's there. We've always seen it. Um, what? Why do we need to fly out and kind of touch it, per se? What What don't we know about it that we, we need to know? So we owe our existence to our star, the sun. Without the sun, life wouldn't, would, wouldn't even exist here on Earth or, on, or anywhere, anywhere in the solar system. But there are certain phenomena that occur on the sun that affects us in many ways. For, for instance, um, back in May of this year, when we have this super storm, we have multiple events on, on the sun that produces all this show of aurora all, all over the place, very, very low down to Florida and other, other states. That was actually the effect of the sun and our connection to the sun to it. But also there are other phenomena as well. For example, if you if you look the solar corona, that is the outermost layer of the uh, solar atmosphere that we see during the total solar eclipse, that is over 300 times hotter than the solar surface itself. And we know that the, all the energy is coming from the from the interior of the sun. So it sounds counterintuitive that that the where the energy coming from is actually way cooler than the atmosphere itself. And that boiling gas also gives us a flow of particles that we call a solar wind that flies at, at hundreds of kilometers per second. But the mystery, we don't know where they get the energy from. And the issue is, if you observe the, th the sun from afar, like from, um, from Earth, we cannot uh, get to what causes this phenomena because the, f the fingerprints of this phenomenon get erased by the journey as the, the, the material is flying from the sun toward Earth. So in order to solve them, we need to go there and make me measurements locally there in order to get uh, insights on what is ca causing all these phenomena. And by the way, these phenomena are not only uh, specific to the sun. They are also for billions and billions of stars out there in the, in the universe. So understanding our sun in a way gives us access or to, so, to, some, to gain some knowledge about stars out there in the universe. I never really thought about it that way, about how if you study our sun, you can actually study the stars that we, we can't get to. Um, and I guess that leads to my one of my next questions. What are you most excited about this, especially with this next approach coming up? Um, 
a few days ago, I um, at the uh, Geophysical Union uh, conference uh, that was in DC just last week, I was asked, "Are you um, are you stressed? Are you uh, anxious about this closest approach? Because we know a Parker Solar Probe is a high risk mission." So my answer to this. I'm excited, I'm not stressed at all. And the reason for this, that we built a system that is working so well. And over the past six years, we built so much confidence that our spacecraft is working so well and is going just to make history. And the most important thing is going to give us data that will help us understand the, the um, phenomen physical phenomena that we have been struggling with for decades. But more importantly, I'm really waiting for a big surprise from Parker Solar Probe. And one of them would be if the sun gives us a gift, like the biggest explosions um, ever, when Parker Solar Probe is very close to the sun. Wow. And, and I, I got another question, because I saw this on the last flyby, because this has flown by the sun about 20 times now. Uh, 21 times 21 times and each time it gets closer and closer yes. and it also gets faster and faster um and the last one uh, correct me if i'm wrong but i read that it, it was going so fast it could fly from new york to tokyo in about a minute yes. um it, this time around is it going even faster and com can you compare that to just like other objects that of uh, man-made objects in their speeds we cannot compare it to other um, human-made objects because Parker Solar Probe will be the fastest. It's already the fastest ever. So by, by, it actually has been breaking its own record uh, every time we get closer to the sun. But you mentioned Tokyo to, to New York in about a minute. Um, let me put it in, per, uh, per, uh, in give it another aspect to it. So back in 1969, I was not born back then. And I'm still dreaming of seeing women and men on the moon. And hopefully by the end of this decade, we will see that. So it will take them about three to four days to get from the Earth to the moon. But if you pick a ride on Parker Solar Probe, when it is at its um, um, highest speed, which is about 190, 190, 191 kilometers per second, you can get from the Earth to the moon in about half an hour. Wow. Wow. All right. Well, this is exciting. And this is um, going to be taking place on the 24th of December. If anybody uh, watching this right now wants to get more information, maybe they want to watch it live or try to you know, get the information as you guys get the information there in the control room, what do they need to do? So uh, you can learn everything about Parker Solar Probe. You can go to nasa.gov uh, slash Parker or at NASA uh, SAN, you can learn so much about Parker Solar Probe. We have also the um, website on, um, on at the, the, the Applied Physics Lab that is parkersolarprobe.ghuepl.edu. Um, and we are available for anybody who wants to get in touch with us. We are we're happy to talk to it to, to the public out there. We have been doing that already uh, quite quite a lot. And yeah, the information is out there, and people can get access to it. Well, thank you very much, sir, for your time. Uh, I appreciate what you do, trying to just science expand our knowledge, just as a human species. This is all great stuff. So, thank you very much for your time, and and best of luck coming up here in uh, what just about a week now. Thank you so much, and it's, it's really a really pleasure to talk to you.